What's going on, dudes? Better. Ba, ba, da, da, ba. No, that's not even the right theme tune. What's going on? Welcome back to The Vault. Uh, it's your boy, MC Spad Titties. And the film I will be reviewing this evening is No Time to Die. Been waiting for this film for well over a year, as of many, many people. Um, so without further ado, let's just jump straight into it. This one opens with a gorgeous aerial shot of a mystery man as he makes his way through a snowy forest. Uh, snowy woods uh, before we get a bit of back bit, bit more backstory on Madeline Madeline I think I'm pronouncing that right uh, really great and talented cast for this one uh, Daniel Craig graces our screens once again in his last performance as Bond uh, he will honestly you know be sorely missed um, he is rejoined by the likes of Ralph Fiennes Ben Whishaw uh, Naomi Harris and Leah Seydoux um, there's also some new cast members Liana Lynch is a badass in this and she's joined by Rami Malek who is terrifying as our villain whose weapon of choice is poison uh, Christoph Waltz also returns in an awesome scene as Blofeld I know that they will probably scrap this cast and bring in new, new actors but I do, hope, I do hope they keep some of this original cast I'm not quite ready to, to let go of some of them yet I also hope we get to see more of Anna Diarmas' character because she she was honestly the standout in this entire film. So I hope there's some kind of um, TV spin-off. Um, that would be that would honestly be really cool. Um, the story for this one tells of a retired Bond who must don the tuxedo again in order to stop a biological weapon that attacks specific DNA. That's quite a cool premise in and of itself and the film paces nicely at, at just under three hours. Um, it's Craig's last film so I can excuse the runtime. Um, the story is gripping and unlike the previous Bond films, really gritty or more so gritty. Um, the film also packs quite an emotional punch with the death of a much beloved and long living Bond character. Um, um, this film also has all the dry wit and humour that you'd expect from a Bond film. Uh, plenty of funny quips and one-liners uh, with perfect delivery from every character. The rivalry between Bond and the new 007 is also pretty hilarious. When you have two insanely cocky, confident characters, you're bound to have some uh, head-butting. Um, I absolutely loved it. Um, the action in this is also what you'd fully expect from a Bond film. The one thing I love about these films is that the action never feels stale, uh, film to film. The action is never boring, and certainly in this film, the action is tense, gripping, and just and just plain bloody entertaining. Um the pre-credit action scene was fantastic. Even though I saw stuff from it in the trailer, it was thrilling to watch. Um, even more so when the familiar, more bassy Bond theme plays, you know, provided and made better and more epic by the talented Hans Zimmer. Um, there's one point where Bond steps out of a building, uh, cocking a gun and just begins shooting bad guys with all the fucking coolness and confidence, you know, of Bond. And it, it was just so awesome. Um, Kerry... Kari, Kari, Kerry Fukunaga. I'm definitely pronouncing that wrong. Directs this one, and while he would have been, he while he wouldn't have been my first choice to direct a film like this, um, I can't say I have ever, I have never enjoyed any of his previous work. In fact, I, I, I enjoyed uh, his shows like um, The Alienist and and Maniac, which are both on Netflix. If you haven't seen those, I definitely recommend them. Um, he gives an entertaining film with a great villain and even uh, even greater, more exciting action sequences. So I think that's all, all you can really uh, ask for, really. I do hope that Fukunaga... Fukunaga, I'm, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. I, I doubt I am. I really hope he, you know, he, he does go into more films like this. Um, I also hope we, we see more TV shows from him as well because he is a really talented director. Um, there we have it. The only thing I really learned from this was that I'm actually in love with Anna Diarmas. So I, if I could, you know, find any chance to ask her to marry me, that would be that would be grand. Um, there we have it, guys. There's my review for No Time to Die. Let's jump to the two most important questions. Question number one: Would I would I recommend this film? This film is phenomenal. I would a hundred percent recommend this film. Um, if you are a diehard Bond fan, however. Um, I probably wouldn't recommend this film. If you are just a casual cinema goer, then you know you will probably enjoy this film. If you're sat there wondering why I wouldn't recommend this film to die-hard Bond fans, just bear with me. Um, I but there we are. I would I would recommend this film to just casual cinema goers, people who enjoy going to the cinema, but not to die-hard Bond fans. Um, so question number two: Does this film belong in the vault? <sighs> okay. 
let me first say that I love this film from the start. It's a phenomenal film. However, the ending just completely, completely ruins it and lets it down. Big spoiler here. So if you want, if you know, if you want to tap off this video, if you haven't seen the film yet, I know that this film isn't being released in America for like another week. Um, so here's your chance to tap off the video. I'll give you a few seconds. Do so now. Okay. It felt incredibly lazy and cheap to me to kill to kill off Bond. It felt like the writers wrote themselves into a corner and just came up with the lazy idea of killing him. It also felt like, it also felt like they went with the easiest way to elicit an emotional response from the audience. I've honestly never given this kind of thinking a lot of traction, but it honestly feels like strong male characters aren't allowed to exist anymore. So they are, you know, they are killed off and replaced. Um, I'm honestly so disappointed because, like I said, I, I was thoroughly loving this film and enjoying this film before that just incredibly rushed and, you know, just incredibly rushed ending that just did not make sense. It made no sense to kill Bond in the slightest. Um, so I'm, I'm incredibly disappointed that that is the route they took. Um, and I feel like it, I feel like it's an issue with Hollywood. I feel like if Hollywood keeps fucking up like this, they will start to lose customers. Um, I do not think there are there are a lot of talented a lot of talented writers in Hollywood at the moment because we keep getting just you know shit like this um just TV also TV at the moment is also just absolutely terrible um so for that reason because they just went with the lazy cheap route of killing bond um this film unfortunately is not going into the vault there's that little Heard star and it's gone off followed by bond being chased by someone on a bike i don't know um but there we have it guys as always if you loved the film let me know what you love down in the comments below i'd be interested to hear from people who loved the ending who loved the film despite the ending and you know if if you hated the film i can probably guess that you hated the film for the same reason that i did um i actually spoke to um, a diehard Bond fan that I work with and he was also really disappointed with the ending but as always guys if you like what I'm doing here please don't forget to like subscribe share this, with, share this video with your friends your pets your families your friendly neighborhood spies who die at the end of the fucking film please share this video peace love my dudes